Can you guys hear me all right? Oop, there we go. Had to make sure the audio was uh, set okay. Well, let me know if everything is clear. Can you guys hear me all right? Oop, there we go. Uh, I need to mute sure myself the on this side. There we go. Everything sound okay? If you guys uh, need me a little bit louder, let me know in the chat. I will try to accommodate. But otherwise, if it looks good, sounds good. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna click over to my screen. All right, and let's full screen this. Okay, so today I kind of wanted to go over something a little bit special. Last time I think I touched upon this as I started uh, learning some things myself about um, utilizing Autodesk's uh, Fusion 360 and how I can use that with ZBrush. Um, and it's a great program to use on its own, um, especially if you're doing any type of 3D printing or, or doing exact uh, designs um, that are somewhat CAD-based, because uh, it is a parametric uh, modeling uh, package uh, done by Autodesk, called Fusion 360 again. And I use it, and I have been learning it, to use it um, quite simply to do some hard surface uh, designs uh, and creating some shape language, uh, more so for kit bash reasons, uh, but also you can do some amazing things with it, like um, print it out straight as an STL, uh, or send it to like a CNC mill machine, or send things to um, an actual 3D printer, and usually a lot of the topology and whatnot work out perfectly. Uh, and it's cloud-based, which is really cool. So every time you start something, you can save it to a cloud. And how would I use that uh, along with ZBrush? Because, um, you know, as many of you know, ZBrush has its insert multi-mesh feature in which you could do something like this. And now, this is just like a little test dummy model uh, just to test out parts that I've applied and saved in one insert multi-mesh brush. So anybody new to ZBrush, I just kind of wanted to speak on how you could um, model using kit bashing, but kit bashing making things of your own shape language. Uh, one of the things that, it, like in a mini streams that I've watched is um, sometimes uh, it may or may not always be covered about, you know, doing hard surface and how one reaches a sort of like basic design for hard surface or comes up with like new shapes. And so I always believe that in creating a kit bash, um, you know, using something similar to and or making your own uh, visual language is something that helps out. So, like if you have custom parts uh, with, you know, either a medium amount of detail or like a lot of bevels, uh, yes, you can use ZBrush for its beveling. And actually, I'm probably going to be doing a few things where I'll take a piece of something from either Maya or Fusion, bring it into ZBrush, and, you know, use some. Um, Boolean operations inside of uh, ZBrush, just using straight uh, subtools and uh, how to set up to do a, a Boolean and then union mesh. Uh, and then I may take some pieces and create them in Fusion and then it advance the library that way. And so basically what you see up here when I created this brush is a, a catalog of different objects uh, made into sort of like a series of uh, familiar shapes. Uh, just some some blocked out pieces that I can use. They're, they're not super detailed um, as far as hard surface, but I want to have some wiggle room later to come in and add, um, you know, inside the focal areas or areas of rest on a particular shape. Um, oops, sorry about that. I have my kids in the other room uh, sealed off in a way. But uh, anyway, uh, I've created uh, just different shapes and I've applied them to a brush. So, of course, hitting M on the keyboard uh, when you create an IMM brush, it shows you the catalog of collected uh, multi meshes that have been, in, you know, put into a particular brush, or, um, into a sort of like a collection. And you can organize these. I mean, you can delete them, edit them, uh, add to them, you know. But any shape that you create. Uh, whether it be you know poly or I believe sometimes also you know triangulated meshes will also work or decimated meshes, you could put them into an insert multi mesh brush. So I would just say that the topology of these brushes, like if when you when you create uh, basic shapes or whatnot, 
Um, I would just watch at your edge flow or make sure that they're light and clean enough so that when you draw onto an object it's not too heavy or anything like that. But usually a, a geo that's a little optimal, uh, especially coming from someplace like Fusion, uh, it goes right in, no holes or anything, no crazy translated uh, faces or anything like that. So I wanted to create something like that and show you how I, I stick it into ZBrush and then you know go from there. And then when I have enough of these, I could probably try and make like a mock object just uh, trying to kit bash something together. Uh, right now I've just applied these to a sphere and then what I do is because of these being different poly groups, uh, I can take these apart uh, by just, you know, using something like the transpose or uh, uh, world space widget. And of course I can hold command or excuse me, control, control or command. It depends. If you're on PC, I guess it would be control, but on Mac, it would be command key. And clicking on the object or polygroup uh, will mask out all the others. And then what I do a lot is just use uh, the split mask points feature, which of course you know brings it back into a separate uh, tool. So I can draw on these and then separate the objects um, or line them up. And then maybe even from here, I can do a render and kick it over to some place like Keyshot. So. Uh, let me see here. Just as an example sake, I'm going to start up Keyshot. Derp -a derp -a derp. There we go. And let me open my last. Okay, so this is something like a test of just some of the same objects that I made. Um, unfortunately, I had a crash of ZBrush last night that actually unlinked this project, and I think I, I didn't get the quick save from it, so I'm kind of bummed, but. Uh, I, I went back far enough to just uh, get one that was the most recent and it still has most of this so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But it, again, uh, in the chat let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer of course. But um, I have a simple material that uh, actually a friend of mine, uh, Kirill Chepazenko, actually gave and passed on to me uh, and it's a really cool material and I'm going to mess around with it and try to get some, some more metal feel out of some of these. But it's it's a, just a standard lid with an HDRI. Uh, and I'm doing this only for mock-up purposes just to see how it is. But of course, uh, just to let you know that you can use Bridge uh, to kick over pieces and then you know, get some real uh, HDRI light on it and do a render or something like that to preview your pieces and see how they're holding up. Uh, because I always believe that, you know, once you create shapes, you should look at it in a well-lit scenario so that you can see how lighting affects uh, sort of a composition of uh, hard surface details. And so, you know, this is a, another added tool to our repertoire here. So anyway, okay, so I'm going to kick over, actually. I uh, prepared a couple of things. One is I have a file going in Fusion, uh, and these are just... Uh, basic geometric shapes so a lot of this stack over here is just um, little pieces that I've made either to add on or join in such a fashion which uh, I think this crossbar was put in and then I just clipped off the top so I have duplicates of uh, different you know little uh, three-dimensional I guess slugs you could say uh, and then just using these parts sometimes I'll cut out details and so I'm just going to start uh, taking a minute to just sort of freestyle and build up a shape and show you kind of what I'm going to do. And then I'll, I'll do some gentle explaining. So first off, I'm going to start off with something like a sketch. And I'm going to pick a plane to draw the sketch on. Uh, and basically, this is XYZ coordinates. And so I'm going to pick this plane here to, at the right. Uh, and then I'm going to start drawing off somewhere. So I'm just going to zoom in and take a sketch and this is basically almost like if you've used uh, Illustrator or something like that um, you can come in and just draw out some points and it's kind of weird this is going outside of the mandate of um, ZBrush which I hope is okay but um, once you have parts like this you know you can keep this sketch and you can also add on to it so um, let's say if you add or subtract pieces, I'm going to do another sketch, just going back to the right, uh, and start drawing in something. So let's see here. I'm going to take a couple of square shapes and add to this. Maybe halfway in. And I'm not really worried about the size of things, although 
Uh, because this is a CAD based program, all of these shapes can be set to a specific size. So like if you need it at two millimeters or if you need it at two meters, I'm sure you could probably uh, set just a, a size to it and get it to real world size. So stop sketch. Uh, and then maybe add a few more pieces. Uh, so I'm gonna add here on the same plane. Uh, do something like uh, this, 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 and then go here. There we go. Cool. That'll work. Um, yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to stop the sketch. Uh, and I can separate these out, I'm sure, and probably do an extrude, but I'm just gonna, I want just like the silhouette, or like maybe kind of like a, a crazy silhouette. I can move uh, all of these objects, so like if I double click on an edge, hit M, I should be able to move this piece. Uh, maybe I'll move it here. And say okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's gonna update it. Uh, I think you can also do these by the edge. So if I just click and move around, I can move the edge up a little bit. That might be cool. Okay, so I'll take this um, and then I'll take all three of these and I'm finished with the sketch already. But I can take and select these faces as well highlight in blue Oops, wrong finger on the keyboard sorry there we go so this silhouette is what I'm going to extrude so I'm just hitting E and then I'm gonna set to two sides uh, actually symmetric would work better that way it'll come out the thickness will come out of both sides I can pull it out and say okay and it's gonna create a new body and all of these lists of um, parts are actually bodies so I'm gonna say okay and so now I have a blocked out shape I'm not ex sure exactly what I'm gonna do with it there's some points here that maybe this is not gonna work out but uh, I can then probably solve them by just selecting some of these edges and then uh, this is a quick way about fusion, but I noticed um, a friend told me about this. This is really great. Is you could just hit S for search, uh, and then you could say do something like um, do a C, which will bring up all the C items in the menu, uh, and then you could pull up just chamfer, and you can chamfer stuff. So I'll do something like this. Maybe that'll work out a little bit better later. Uh, I can also select the face, do an extrude shorten this, maybe push it back a little bit, hit enter, and it's just really nice quick um, bevels. Of course, when you export something like this, the way that I'm going to show you guys how to get pieces out of here, you need to actually take it before you um, try to save it out uh, as an OBJ to ZBrush. Um, what I'm just thinking is just creating a nice silhouette uh, and then sort of in a way of almost like you would do booleans inside of ZBrush itself, which both methods I'm going to go through again. Um, but what I'm doing is just kind of push-pulling, um, grabbing certain verts, and then adding like chamfers to sort of break up some of the geometry and smooth it out. So I can probably go around here just holding shift. I'm holding shift plus uh, option, just kind of uh, panning along with the selection. I'm just grabbing verts. Because unfortunately, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how this works yet with Fusion, but I'm, I don't think that you could like do like you would in Maya and just double click and just get like a, a whole edge ring selected. Uh, even that with Z Modeler is really, really easy to do, but unfortunately, I don't think you could do that or like a complete edge loop selection yet. If they had that, that would be great. But just bear with me here. I'm gonna go around the edges here and just select an edge and add on. There we go. I wanna make 
make sure not to click on the face because it will select edges and faces and it will kind of throw some things off. So I'm just getting one side. Okay, that's good. That'll work. I'll pull out. Uh, basically, navigation is a little bit different than many might be used to. Uh, to rotate around, uh, I'm using the on a Mac keyboard, I'm using Option, uh, Alt key, and Shift to sort of rotate them all around. Uh, along with the left mouse button, uh, you can uh, pan using the scroll wheel. Uh, and then on the right, you can zoom. So uh, right mouse button plus uh, Alt plus Shift. Right. So I'm just going to swing around some of these. Oh, actually grabbed a point that I shouldn't have. There we go. Let's get these quickly selected. Go around. There we go. You select that guy, get that guy. So all of those, and then I'm going to also deselect this, hit this edge, and this one. Okay, so that's both sides, at both edges of both sides, and then I'm just going to hit S, uh, C again, go to chamfer, uh, and I'll use the arrow here, just chamfer it out. There we go. I think zooming in also, it has some snap tolerances, so like if you zoom in, you can also, um, whoop. what's going on there? Oh, okay, so I might go manually. There we go. I wonder, ah, there was one edge I forgot. Okay. Okay. Of course, again, if you have any questions, um, what I'm up to and uh, how might I might I do something slightly different, let me know and I'll try to answer your question. sure uh, I can see all the chats from all the rooms here for a second. If you guys have a chance, uh, I think I'm having some problems seeing all of the rooms um, from our real stream chat service. So if you happen to be on YouTube or anything like that uh, and you have a question, um, if you can try to hit me up in Twitch, I might be able to see it a little bit better. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm trying to keep a couple of tabs open and, and watch comments, but I'm supposed to be able to get them all in one place. I'm not sure if it's, I'm looking at it the right way, but I want to be able to answer questions by everyone if you have them, and I just don't notice it. I'm going to wait and sort of uh, apologize in advance. There we go. So I'm going to grab all of these. These little guys. 
guys here. Oops. Okay. So these guys on the side, so that way nothing's missing. I'll just pan around and look. There we go. Most of it. A few more parts here. So basically, sort of the idea behind this is um, I would do a couple of sketches of um, just base shapes inside of um, inside of fusion here, uh, and then I use some of the uh, fillet and chamfer features that are inside of fusion. Uh, and I just sort of go around and start to think uh, sort of in a positive negative fashion so like if you have ever used um, uh, negative dynamesh features with uh, or insert features with uh, ZBrush or any other type of boolean system uh, you know you just make a lot of uh, primitive shapes or you can make a, a bunch of primitive shapes and or sketch shapes uh, and then take those and um, uh, give them some extrudes or cut away from them uh, and then you just sort of slowly gradually build up a, a design to shape uh, and then at the end I'm going to save it as an OBJ and then bring it over uh, into ZBrush which uh, even there I like to pick up and do even more boolean stuff so um, I'm going to take this object and only do a few things to it and sort of show how to get it out of here uh, so look, let's right, right now I'm just going to hit S again, get that chamfer going that I didn't before. There we go. There we go. Maybe something a little wide, but a little less than that. Let's go 0 0.8. Oops. that and maybe this edge Oops. these three guys here and this here I'll take and do a quick fillet about good. And then I can do some interesting things like um, I'll take this side here on the right and I'll put a couple of holes in it uh, just by hitting H on the surface. So I could go all the way through, or I can only go part of the way, and that's what the, sort of these arrows are. But I'm going to actually knock a hole clean through. Uh, and you can also set sort of like a, a couple of different designs, uh, like threaded, tapped clearance, uh, counter bore. So you could sort of play around with these and get some interesting designs to just a simple hole. But I'm just going to do a simple cut through for now. Uh, say OK. Uh, and then, let's say, uh, draw another circle in here. So going from the create menu, cylinder, and I'm going to knock a bigger hole out. And I'm going to pull this out just a little bit and size it. 
kind of to where I, I need. I didn't draw it dead on, but that's okay because I'm actually going to use this as a new body uh, cylinder and it'll make a new body here that I can select and I can position it properly. So I'm going to hit OK and then I believe that's number 52 and I hit M, I can move it. So I'm going to click on the absolute right, grab it here. position it. Uh, it's still distance away from the mesh a little bit, so that's fine. So I'm going to put it in here just so that it would intersect, but it's still got some space around it. Uh, I'll hit OK. And I think actually I'm going to duplicate this over to the other side. So let's do this and hit M, except on this copy, I'm going to create copy. Uh, just position it over on the other side, the same way, and then hit OK. And then I'm going to select on the, the list, the itemized list, list of bodies, I'm going to hit 52 and 53, and then I'm going to be able to change these both together. So I'm going to hit search, S for scale, and I'm going to do a uniform scale. So let's get that to the right. Just a tad here, bigger, so okay. It's gonna apply it. I'm gonna select them again and move it into position. It's kind of hard to see, but I think I should have it. Yep, right about there. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, now that I have two pieces, I'm going to actually bring them in just um, a slight bit because when I scaled it, it moved it out of position. So I'm going to go from the top. Oops. There we go. And I think only one of them slid out of place a little bit when I scaled it. They should be both the same size. So I'm going to pull one in and then the other. So I'll do that. Oops, sorry. You could also, of course, mirror this. You don't have to do it this way. So I'm just going to basically make it slightly protrude off of the surface. Um, maybe bring it out just a tear further. Uh, and I could move this one off from the other side and just mirror it. That would probably be better. So I'll pull this out. Take this one. Oops, not that one. This one. And mirror it. Uh, an interesting thing with mirroring is now that it's going to mirror, uh, if I click on select, I can select the plane to mirror it on, and then it's mirrored the piece on the opposite side. So now I'm going to take uh, our first body for this, so this one here, 51, and then I think uh, also holding the command key or control key, select 52 and 54, which look to be the rings on the outside, or the cylinders on the outside. Uh, now I'm going to hit S, C, and I'm going to do a combine, and I'm going to cut away. And so if you cut it away, you'll see that these became like more like a... Um, uh, uh, booleaned out and they're displaying red that's actually feeding into the geometry that's going in and therefore cutting it out so I'll hit OK and that has been re you know taken out of my shape so I have like a nice little rise in the ring there uh, and I can also click the edge go on the other side click the same one uh, hit C or S and C again chamfer it again for some reason. There we go. Put like a little chamfer on the edge. And if you wanted to, you could even come in here and do some interesting things like probably uh, a 
and say OK for that. And then I can select in here and hit E. Uh, just one side. Pull it out a little bit. Oops. Is that the same face? Should be the same face. Face on the inside. be something weird about it. But anyway, um, I was thinking maybe I could cut another or extrude it out, but for some reason it's maybe it's a faces thing, but it's gonna be weird. It's selecting the other face on the other side. And I don't know if I wanna mess up something by changing it. Oh yeah it extruded it on the inside of the, the face, which is not what I wanted to do. So but it bored to clean through and then I'm going to take um, maybe a few more edges and do some fillets to it rounding out some of these bevel points hit OK and also let's um, draw a couple more shapes to take out of it something interesting um, so I'm going to take this and move it out of the way so I don't get confused. There we go. So now that I have just like a body shape, I'm going to take some smaller pieces um, from here and maybe cut those out too. So let's see, I'll take something like this here. Let's see which one number was this? 30. I'll take 30 and I'll hit M and duplicate it. And it's basically just a disposable piece, but. I'm going to cut it out, mirror it, and then cut it out of our shape. Fair enough. And hit OK. All right. Now, once more, I'm going to take um, this shape here. Which one was that? Fifty-five. Okay, right, because I duplicated it. So I'm going to scale it down. Maybe something that would be a nice fit inside of that. place and with this one actually um, I think on the inside I actually did a fillet already so or a chamfer rather uh, and it should hold that chamfer and the boolean which would be nice because then you can sort of design some pieces then just give them some nice edges from cutting them out so go up here there we go and as long as these intersect a bit, just worry about placement a little bit. Hit OK. There we go. That'll be a nice little piece out. So I'll take this and mirror it. And I'm going to select the plane again. here and it's there and so now all I need to do is take the larger piece again so this larger body here number 51 uh, and I also need this guy and this guy let me just make sure they're yep they're selected uh, and then again do it hitting S C for combine and making sure the combine is set to cut OK, and then I took out the piece. So even at um, this rate, if I wanted to take just like the large shape here, then I'm going to select this. Uh, and I think I should probably, I think, well, there's no other pieces, it's just one solid body. So at, I suppose at this point, yeah, I, 
could just take this piece here along. And under the create menu, what I'm going to do is create a base feature. Uh, and then I'm going to hit modify mesh and then B rep to mesh. And what that'll do is it'll create a, a, a quadded or triangulated body um, and holding all of the fillets and chamfers, uh, it'll create mesh density to that. And probably you can set the, the different uh, uh, frequency of the mesh. So like um, if your normal deviation is lower or higher, sometimes the, the topology will change. Also service, uh, surface deviation uh, and maximum edge, it just increases the frequency or, or decreases it. So like if I hit these sliders and I bring them down slightly, you might notice some changes in the mesh uh, becoming more dense, right? So it can match some of the edges and the bevels that you put in. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then now that I have this, I can right click it and just save it as an OBJ. And so I have like a little folder going here. Uh, let me catch up with it. There we go. Uh, and I could just rename this. So I'm gonna rename it number nine. And then I'll just treat that as a base silhouette piece to do some, some further booleans from in ZBrush. So I'll save that. And then I'll flip back over to ZBrush. And I'll grab something like a star, right? Um, it's pretty easy enough, but a star is just like a basic um, Polymesh 3D shape, you can just uh, make Polymesh 3D on this one, right? Uh, or not, and then I think, I, I think I don't think that you need to actually, uh, but you just hit import, and I'm gonna import my OBJ that I saved over this object, right? So it'll, it'll replace the object. And there we go, right? So nice and clean, no holes, uh, everything's pretty tight. You could probably take something like this and uh, Dynamesh it, and mess with it more, or you could probably uh, Z-remesh it, which would be even better. Um, I believe sometimes you can even take a, something like a polygroups and then move uh, on over to group by uh, normals, and that will take some of the faces and create, but you probably have to edit some of these, but you could frame these and probably Z-remesh them, uh, which is some really cool stuff. but. Uh, for now, I don't think that I need to go that far, but what I want to do first is I'm not going to worry about the topology or even flipping to um, Dynamesh. Um, what I did want to do is just take and build some shapes on top of this uh, and then cut them out further. So using some of the booleans that you see um, used in something like Fusion, I can take it a step further even in, you know just now that I have like a nice funky shape to play with. Uh, and I can bring it on over to ZBrush and work on it further. So uh, a lot of times what I like to do <clears throat> when I'm using stuff like this is I'll go into the brush by hitting B, the brushes, by hitting B on the keyboard and then hitting I and then using the primitives, right? So the IMM primitives. And if you hit M further, uh, all of these are in here, but they, there is specifically a Q mesh cube uh, which is really handy to kind of edit some things. So I'm going to hide my polygroups, and I have a little bit of surface detail, not very much, but just a little bit here. Um, but what I want to do is get rid of the floor for one, pull in here, and just simply draw like a simple cube, right? Uh, and from this cube, what I'm going to do is take it and split mask points, and then now that I have it as a separate subtool, make edits to it. So I'm just gonna kick it underneath. Um, look at this as polyframe, and I'll get out the widget. So like hit W or something for the move tool. And then I'll just use <coughs> these world space widget handles here, instead of the, the not the conical, but the uh, scaling. And I'll just move it out in and out, right? So if I want to cut like a cut line through something, kind of come in and size it up, scale it even really thin, I can make it taller. Uh, and then what I can do, of course, is um, 
to do anything with booleans, uh, one of the first things I suggest is probably going into your render tab and under render booleans, turning live boolean on. Um, this way, if I created the major shape or the, the silhouette shape, it needs to be also a start group. So I'm going to click here on this arrow. Uh, secondly, in left, I'm going to add to the shape. What I'm going to do is actually cut away from it. So that I'm going to use this intersecting button here. I'm going to click that. And it would display like this if you have um, polyframes on, but now I can just use the widget and push it into the geometry, and it is creating a Boolean. So then I can you know, just mess with these handles a little bit more, push it even further in. All right. Um, let's see. I can hold these and duplicate it. So I'm going to actually hold Control and slide another one down. Right, something like that um, and the cool thing about this is I'm doing this all in one subtool but if I clear the mask from drawing those extras um, I believe also you can kind of if this is too thick uh, you can come down to your deformation tab uh, and you can actually mess I believe um, with the inflate and this will give you just a little bit of change in the thickness on some of these cut lines, right? Not too thin or it might not show up, but just to give you an idea of making it smaller, you can inflate it or deflate it uh, and get some varying results. So there, there are just like two scores and then I can create another line um, or I could probably even duplicate one of these panels. Let's try that. So take this and I'll hit control again. I'm going to pull out a copy of it. So basically this is what, what is happening. I'm creating a, a literal copy. It's masked off automatically, the, the placement that I originally made. And so uh, the controlled and world space clicking on the conical moving part of the widget, I created a copy. So um, now I'm probably going to just narrow this down a little bit and I'll rotate it and I'll mask off front tube, uh, and then I'll split mask points, and it'll make an extra subtool for just the one piece that I had unmasked, uh, so I could probably use that somewhere else. Uh, if you do solo on this, this is what you're looking at geometry-wise. It's just one piece, and it actually looks like it flipped. Probably some of the normals flipped because uh, <laughs> I messed with it in deformation. It might have taken it and hidden it, but it's actually still there. And I believe it will probably take it out. But what I wanted to do is just take one of these and rotate it. Uh, actually, that was a little bit too much. I just wanted it flat. I just want to rotate it by 90 degrees. There we go. Hide that. I'll take this one and run it into here. Let's see if it's cutting out properly. Yeah, there we go. Uh, probably back on the deformation and inflate it again. You, yeah, it's messing with it a little bit. It's shaped. I could join some of these up and cut them out uh, and create sort of a buildup of some design. So once you do this uh, and you have a shape, um, but you you know you just keep cutting and taking larger pieces out of it. Um, I actually want to have another go at this, so I'm going to take these guys out. Okay, I'll take and delete this one out. And roll it over to the side again. Oops. Yeah, let's do that. Yep. All right. So 
split mass points on this guy. Take the start off. This will be an insert. Uh, I need to move these down, so I'm going to actually move that under that. There we are. Take this and start plugging it into there. I can even scale these up. If you do any scaling, um, because I use symmetry, I think you might want to use L symmetry and then use the center scale to sort of scale it down. Uh, that way it does it in place and it doesn't do it uh, globally to both objects to one axis. I think it tends to do that. Um, but I'm just doing it on local. Oops. I'm actually turning it. I don't want to rotate it. I just want to pull it out a little. There we go. That's a nice depth. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I'll take care of this. I'll put one here. And move this over a little bit. Good enough. Take another Q cube and place it right here on the side. There we are. Oops. That was a mistake. There we are. I don't know why I did that. It should not be start. It should be that. Uh, and then I'm going to take it out of the shape and sort of cut into it. I can kind of position these. Stretch this out a little bit and bring it down. There we go. And of course, um, you know, like if I wanted to change some of the shaping of this, like let's say this is too sharp, um, a lot of times what I do is just go back to Q, hitting Q uh, to draw, uh, and then I would take um, view by polyframe so I can see the whole object and hit dynamic solo. So let's say, for example, the part that's cutting in, we want to edit a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to hit B and Z and go to the Z modeler and maybe take and do some interesting things to some of these edges, like uh, if I wanted to... Let's put an edge loop in. I'll insert an edge loop here. And I'll do one pretty close to here, and I'll just cut a groove in. Uh, I can take a Q-mesh and a single poly uh, and maybe just selecting a few of these. There we go. Once I have them selected, I'm going to use QMesh to actually push the face of it into a QMesh on in. Uh, I can also probably take uh, the entire edge around the backside. Uh, and do a bevel, uh, and I'll do a complete. I'll just do it like this, very lightly. Huh, that's interesting. For some reason. Single row. That looks like it should be right. I wonder what's going on. There's, for some reason, they it's not displaying the faces in between the bubble where it makes it. 
it's actually making it blank, which makes me think that there's somewhere maybe a uh, a face or something that needs to be reversed. Uh, because maybe, in fact, way to check that. It's a good way. I'll just hide the backside and look at it from the end. Oops. So that's weird. I must have missed click something. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. I think I was about to put a bevel on that. And what's getting that? That is kind of strange. I'm not sure exactly why it's doing that. So what I wanted to look at and see is if perhaps... Ah, yes. I think there's a face that is flipping wrong. There it is on that side. You know what? I think I know what this is. I should have probably undid that. Nope. That is strange. Anyway, I'm going to try it and see how it works. And if it gives me any problems, then I'll fix it. But uh, taking that out, I'm going to turn off the polyframes. Looks like it works. Looks like the shape is there. So I'm not going to bother it too much. But I just wanted to do something where I could cut a design in and then use the widget and push it in a little bit so that it reads as a nice. Uh, cut or something like that. Doesn't look like some anything's flipping weird. So I'll leave it for now. Oh thank you. <laughs> thank you Blind Fox. I appreciate it. Um, sorry if, if I'm not seeing the, the screen all the time the right way but uh, please do, do, do don't uh, please do ask away any questions that you might have try to answer them. So anyway, I'm just um, working up, a, if you're just joining again, I'm just working up a shape that basically I took um, out, outside of uh, ZBrush from Fusion 360. And I just did a quick block in silhouette of a shape from a sketch. Uh, and then so far, I'm just doing like um, some small inserts along the surface to create sort of like surface noise um, and changing some of the object by way of doing a boolean and so right now we're just uh, viewing everything under the live boolean all of this is non-destructive and you could pretty much sort of edit your shapes uh, and come up with something different or rescale them um, they're not committed to the actual uh, start group yet right so once you have something like this like if you wanted to stop here as a stopping point and then add some details from something else uh, I suppose what you could do is you could come down to your boolean menu uh, and make boolean mesh. So what this will do is everything that's under this start group, um, it becomes one, like the, the start is the, the major shape or the larger shape uh, or the silhouetting shape. And then all of everything underneath are the boolean parts that are being uh, cropped out, right? So anything that it intersects with will actually turn into a Boolean and create more shape language. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to actually make a Boolean mesh really quick. And so it's making a union remeshing. Or a union mesh, I suppose. And when done, all I have to do is hit a pinned. And there it is. So here's the larger shape of things all put together. And let's look at the topo for that. So what it did was, I guess it uh, probably uses an algorithm to um, take those shapes out, tie up all the ends uh, using, you know, I guess what other algorithm it has to close some of these uh, verts and edges. And then you get a larger piece. Of course, it's 
it might be impractical for some things because of course the topology is not you know really all that great um, but you can always uh, do like a Z remesh to fix these but for now uh, just you know in creating like sort of a, a kit bash piece um, I could totally take this uh, for example and I'm gonna go over and let me reselect my brush that I had going uh, not that this oops here we are so these are the collected brushes that I have so far that I've been making uh, and I'm gonna line this up and one of the things that you should think about before you actually make it a insert is that you want to uh, sort of line it up to the view that you're going to apply it so if it makes sense to like apply it from this is you're thinking this is a front end I would bring it towards the camera and of course uh, it may be at a different angle than your actual planes here for the floor but what I do is I usually turn the floor on uh, and if I want to apply it this way I'll take and do maybe the Z forward and that way at its back or, or bottom uh, it will have the, the floor facing it and then face that in towards the camera so the the actual front end of the piece this is the way it's going to draw out when you make it an insert mesh right so now uh, what I want to do is just go down here to create create insert mesh and instead of new I'm actually going to append it to this so I can append it and then pressing M and then as a reminder it's going to be how you can see all of the inserts in the singular brush so I'm gonna push OK on that and you'll see it pop up at the end here so now I have a piece that I can use any old time uh, let's see where's my little slug that I had you can do this on a ball doesn't matter let's try it out on a sphere so now that I've got these change the floor back get rid of it I should be able to apply all of these so if I hit M and I can select A through B I can add some of these parts and see how it drew out this is how I had it oriented I had it oriented from the top when I actually saved it out and so now it's drawing it that way every time I apply it to the surface right so all of these parts here I actually drew up uh, using the same method that I, I, I have been working on since I started uh, in fusion so I save it in fusion um, and keep uh, a file going of everything all of the parts uh, and then I make um, I believe compound shapes out of the large piece that I'm intending to use as a, uh, a kit bash piece and then once I've collected them up I just save them out individually as OBJs and then give them a sequence number and then just slowly import them using something like a, a dummy object like a, a star or something like that and then I import it and then once I import it um, I actually go and create an insert mesh and then I append it to the same brush so now what I can do is now that I have these parts I can go ahead and save it uh, this time actually I should probably save it uh, save it in my ZBrush uh, folder there we go why is that that way now that's better actually save this in my startups so I just need to find my Z startup and brush presets and I'll actually save it as zero one and I mean it's the same name actually that I saved to previously and then save it and this way every time I open ZBrush it'll be saved and it'll show up in my brush menu right um, or you could keep them in a directory when you keep brushes in a directory and then uh, take those and, and collect them all together uh, and access them through the 
uh, spotlight, right? So you can use uh, this with brushes, so same thing. And you can navigate to them and open them, right? Well, let's just try a few of these out and see how they are working. And hit X. Pull them out just a wee bit large. And even though I have X turned on, if I hit the center, it'll draw only one. And I'll use a world space widget. Oops. Not with X turned on. Oops, I'm grabbing from the wrong axis. There we go. And with any of these, I can split the mask parts on them uh, and turn them into you know separate subtools, so I can just manipulate them outright, line it up how as I how I see fit, or you could unify it and and put it in place and just move it to wherever you you want it to. Um, something like this, if I unified it, now it's in a unified space, and I can just pull it straight. It'll center it and everything, so. And I'm actually going to turn on local sim, shorten it, and bring it back. There we go. So even if, like, if I was working not on a sphere, but, like, um, something a little bit more practical, like a more rectangle shape that I designed up, uh, I could use these pieces to add in um, shape language or geometry and change the silhouette of a design. So it's just a really cool way to like get some of your sort of common shapes that you like to use um, into one brush and then build thing, you know, different shapes. Like how many iterations could you design using the same parts, like if you were designing something mechanical. Um, and so I use IMMs in that way. Um, and then of course, you know, I can send it to Keyshot and render it. I can do it even with a uh, previous to some of the streams that I've done uh, with ZBrush Live. You you notice that like I'll use tune shaders and uh, things like that, and I can use that as a basis for an illustration, and then take it into Photoshop and paint it up. Um, there are a myriad of things that you can do. Uh, so let's go back. I just want to hit this, and I'll Alt click on this, and get out the, just hitting the W key, I'm just going to get out the widget and command click this, or control click it, rather, uh, and then again do a split mask points. So a lot of these features like splits, merge visible, I have these set up on the top of my UI, um, which in a lot of ways when I hold a command now, I can scroll down and even add a, more items and whatnot. So sort of task specific, I like to put some stuff down here at the end, but you can do that by uh, saving it in your enable configuration under preferences, I believe. So I'm just going to pull this out. And then I'm going to add, oops, of course you can swap these out but, uh, using the gizmo, but I don't want to do that. I just want to pull some of these out and test them out and see how they look. So I'll take this and split mass points. And we'll put it somewhere, maybe on this side, turning it here. Sorry. That'll work. And then I'll 
do a modify geometry. Or excuse me, modify topology and I'll mirror and weld it. Uh, that's probably on the other side of the X, so probably what I want to do is go down to deformation, quick trick, mirror it, and then mirror and weld it again now that it's on the right side. But you can't do it with LSIM turned on. It'll get a little strange, but there we go. I'll take both of these and just move it up a little bit. So something like this, you know, you could sort of figure out some placement of something uh, using kit bashes, uh, and it makes it kind of cool because you can come up with some interesting, like, sort of doodadded shapes. If I just keep working something like this and looking at how things are uh, are shaped, like, I could probably duplicate these legs and turn it into sort of like a ball mech or something like that, and then I'll have like exterior pieces on the outside. Um, if I go back to draw, let's say for example here, you could put something like this in the middle, right? And that would maybe be the start of a, uh, a mech that way, like a spider mech or something like that. You can get some really funky, neat shapes. guy and actually hide it out. There we go. So now I can take uh, the legs, position them a little bit more. One thing, uh, so since I'm sort of at the beginning of creating this brush, uh, I will probably try to put out a preview of it, but I'm planning on putting it up on my Gumroad a little bit later. But I'm going to probably do a smaller brush of, of some of these pieces uh, and put them up in ZBrush Central for you guys so you can have a, a go at playing with them, at least a few of some of the basic shapes. So look forward to that. I will try to uh, put it up uh, maybe on Google Drive or something and then provide a link for it in ZBC, share it with you guys and see how, some interesting things that what you would like to, to build out of it. It's always fun. Like create your own uh, shape language and then trade it <laughs> kind of with a, with a friend uh, and then see what they do with it. It's kind of a, an interesting little challenge almost. those two up front and then now I think because uh, that's why I'm actually going to mirror it on the Y or not the Y, Z forward, sorry there we go and then mirror and weld along the Z there we go, so now we got a complete set of uh, leg limbs, you know, like maybe those, uh, we could even probably create like another uh, leg joint beyond those and just pull these straight out and maybe use these plates somewhere and use this as the front if we were doing like a, a spider mech or maybe we could create a seat and it, a pilot could sit up here, but usually this is kind of like a, a general layout of how I start blocking something out, if, if, especially when I'm playing with uh, kit bash pieces of my own or something like that. I figure out some some ways to use them or utilize them and see shapes that start to form up. So um, let us try just to see how the light uh, reacts to some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and under render. External render, hit key shot, and I will BPR it, which should utilize the bridge, and then it'll kick it over.
There we go. Alright, so let us look. Okay, so it updated the same file, same pieces basically. Uh, and then what I can do is add, I'm going to add a HDRI of my own making that I like to use here recently. And then once I drop that in, I believe on this file I had an environment set. Uh, change it every so slightly. Usually in the HDRI editor of um, Keyshot, you can mess around with some of the uh, points of light and whatnot. So I just have like two pins going, one for the sky area and one for these street lights here. And if you look down here, the color, I can sort of change the color a little bit, excuse me, uh, and I can increase the brightness a little bit. So pick up, maybe picking up some details that we wouldn't normally see. So if I shift F, I can see full screen of this, and we can kind of see how some of the details are going to hold up. All right. So it's looking pretty cool. And then I can just keep adding to this. So. Um, Oops. Let's say, for example, if I alt click on this one, let's see if that's a separated tool. Yes, it is, subtool. And dynamic solo, go in there a little bit. B, oops, B, I. Actually, give me one second, gents. I actually need to pull one cable and plug in another. I need a uh, secondary tablet. Crazy enough, I have um, a Cintiq and also um, an Intuos Pro M, and sometimes it gets a little bit awkward because. I guess OBS is sharing my main monitor, and so I just need to switch uh, devices here in a second. Give me one sec. There we go. All right. Now. We're cooking with fire, or gas, or gas and fire, something like that. All right, so maybe this will be a little bit quicker. Just make sure that's good. No floor, and let's do a Q cube. I'm gonna stick it here, right, and then split mast. Take out, come out of solo, and so everything I'm going to do, uh, just sort of to figure out sort of the inside of what I'm thinking here. Um, like say, if this is a tail, four legs, two side pieces, and a front end to, uh, like sort of like a spider mech. Uh, I want, I need something, a, a body of mast in the middle to take care of uh, the silhouette. So I'm just going to use some of the scaling from the gizmo to pull it out a little bit. Wrong part of the handle. There we go. So pull this out and pull this out. There we go. Look at it from the side. So now it looks a little, a little thick, but that's all right. Because I can shake this up. And I take. Uh, let's see here. B. Oops. E C C modeler brush again. Come in here and do a little slide. Move this up. But actually, I want the complete edge loop. There we are. And then maybe on the face of this, I have symmetry on, so I'm just going to select this and make sure I'm on Q mesh. Q mesh this up just a little bit, and maybe 
just take this edge and so we have like a nice transition. I'll hold here, use Q mesh again, except this time I'm going to use like a quarter step, come up, pull this, and as you can see in a quarter step it's actually clicking. So I'm going to leave that angle there. And I'm going to go in on both sides and do an insert. Maybe take this and I'll click here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to do a full step here. Yeah, something neat like that. into solo I can sort of look at the contour of this and see what I want to do with it uh, maybe I'll add an insert here and I can even use a little masking to move some of these around so I just masked off the vertex that's sitting on this end and if I hold command I can flip that mask hit W and actually move just the vertices right Clear the mask, and there we go. Uh, maybe on both sides, I'll hit Q again. I'll do a bevel, single row, edge loop complete with symmetry on on both sides. It's kind of funny. Like sometimes these little spots are hard to handle. But I'm sure I'll just take it, hit the M, regular old move, and just pull this out of the way. Right. To which uh, I could probably move also certain lines of verts, so I'm actually going to move this down a little bit. So again, I'll just mask off these three verts, or this, these three edges, actually they're verts that are sitting on those, so halfway across. And I think I can just use the move tool again. Straighten that out. Right? And so you can just sort of use some same techniques as like um, box modeling, right? didn't pull down so well. Let's try it again. It's weird bevels. Sometimes I know also uh, it's probably better to do this but you can while using the C modeler brush um, if you wanted to get certain edges only to bevel out you can actually just grab them specifically and bevel them. So you can add to curve. It's pretty easy, but you could just click a curve on, on one end. It doesn't work very well with symmetry on. I'm not sure, but I've never had really good luck with it. So I'm going to turn symmetry off and just click once here. And it'll highlight a curved edge. And I'll keep clicking, right? So I've got two edges here. Let's put some some bevel to that. Uh, no, oops. I'm gonna bevel it. There we go. So when I click on it, it should be beveling, but for some reason it's acting weird on me. Bevel single row. Yep, yep. is too small. Nope. Okay, let's try it again. Once here. And once here. It doesn't want to do it. 
I'm not sure why. I need to investigate these things. But every, usually what you can do is, uh, maybe it's because it, it would create an angle on the other side, but you should be able to just go on its edge and hit a curve. I'm not sure if you have to close those curves off. I don't think so. But you should, usually when I've, I've used it, if you just draw out a single uh, add to curve, along some edges here even if they're incomplete usually it'll do it but let's just go ahead and try to complete around its edge and see if it works out right it's actually not not bad as a tool to use Oops. ah you know what I think I know what the problem is let's do nothing here. I think somehow I might have used it. Yeah, I did. I messed it up. There we go. It did make it, but it was so small that it. I think the tolerance or the threshold of how it was drawing out a bevel was messing up. Sorry about that. So let me go back a few steps. And everything else I'm going to turn off. So just setting it to do nothing for birds and edges and then starting over might be the way to go. Uh, do nothing. And what I'm just trying to do is make a block uh, for the inside of this. In fact, before I take too much time on it, since we have 30 minutes left, I'll just turn back. And I'll worry about shaping it later, but we could add a few more pieces, right? So maybe if, um, let's see, I'm going to actually do an extrude. And I'll do it on symmetry, and I'll, I'll click a few faces. guy a little bit. There we go. And actually, I'll take this. that off, pull it out a little bit more, that could be fun, right, and so um, sometimes, you know, I think I've said, might have mentioned this in a different stream, but whenever you're designing something, um, you could fill it with a darker material and sort of see how things are going to go um, silhouette-wise, which also sort of informs your design language a lot. So, like, basically, I'm looking at a, a silhouette that's come almost like it's kind of like a spider tank or almost like a tachikoma or fuchikoma tank, actually. You know, for quad uh, sort of quad legs. Sorry about that. Uh, quad legs with. Um, these shapes here and then pulling out the body in sort of like a flat top uh, and then I could add some other like cybernetic appendages or uh, cylinder shapes to sort of break up some of the legs and uh, sort of evoke maybe the sense that it's something that can move uh, properly uh, on quadrupedic you know legs so you can just give it some time to, to mess with it but and that's basically how I use some, some kit bashes with um, buildings, just sort of like a general silhouette. So, yes, uh, you can use Fusion for something like that. You can use also Fusion with ZBrush. Uh, you can take parts in. A lot of these, um, they look incredibly simplistic, but uh, when I add them or design them up in Fusion, I try to add uh, some blank areas so that um, the end user or designer who's using it, or even myself, can go in and, and add extra, you know, uh, inserts or uh, 
sort of like a focal points and some of the blank areas, uh, which is always kind of neat. So let, let me just take this and I'll do a really quick render shot over to Keyshot. I mean, this is horribly simple. It's just, it's just like a, basically a, a, a giant proxy. And then later, I can worry about the topology and shaping it up, or dynamesh it and start using a clipping curve, and then maybe uh, z remesh it back, and even do some contouring from a, a z, z remeshed piece, and get heavier uh, amounts of focal uh, density. But I always think that starting from a simple beginning like this uh, really helps you inform your shape language right and so you know even as far as like taking a piece of paper and drawing out like a shape uh, or like a, a like a I guess they call it a, 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 a greeble or like a surface detail um, something that you want to design and um, it, it looks better as actual geometry than than it does if you were to say make like a, a an alpha stamp alpha stamps I save for like even smaller details that I want to put in uh, but I want to make sure that the outside silhouette and build up is it has some structure that is is more sound and so um, making your own kit bash uh, set it, it's it's really neat to do as just like a design exercise because you can make your own pieces and sort of start to see what types of shapes that you gravitate towards how you can change uh, your own shape language because uh, you know a lot of model building like I, I would say even more interesting model building is especially in, in hard surf is coming up with new and interesting contours um, and and sort of shapes that lend the eye into uh, sort of uh, a direction that matches the character like say if this bug has like a, a swept back tail right um, why is that and is there a feature behind that or like sort of the t-shape in its body does it have a pilot is does it need to have a lot of center mass because uh, someone needs to get in it or does it house like a large weapon or something uh, like if I mounted a camera or mini guns or something like that or does it have safety rails and then therefore the silhouette is informed by a, a yet a again an, addition, an additional shape um, that adds to its complexity so I go around and I, I keep adding um, smaller pieces um, these right now are larger pieces and I'm probably gonna get to some smaller pieces additionally uh, and I'll, I'll be sure to try to let you guys uh, see some of its progress and how it goes so I'm just gonna work for a little bit and play with the shape now would be a good time if if, you, if any if, if anyone has any questions, I would love to hear it. Uh, hit me up in the chat. For some reason today, unfortunately, uh, oh, <laughs> well, have a good one. Have a good night in your time zone. It's always fun, interesting. I'm not sure if like for some folks if I should say good morning or good evening, you know, because of different time zones. But do have a good night. But I'm still here for 20 more minutes, so I'm gonna just mess around a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to control bubbles in that fashion, so I'm not sure um, how I might want to do this. Probably I would go through and create just like an outer shell, basically, and just as as I get that proxy done, I would take it into sometimes a few other apps and shape it out. Um, 
and then come bring it back to ZBrush and, and continue on. Set up a few loops that I'm usually thinking to do a couple of extrudes from. And then on this face, I'll key mesh it. to be straightened out. Next time around when I have more time, I will sort of show you guys some progress of how some of this ended up and uh, hopefully of course I will get some of um, just a, a tester, a sh maybe sort of a light version of this brush that I can give out to you guys for free, and you guys can have a go at trying out some things with it. I think that would be really fun. So let's try this. There we go. Oops. how that would work on the inside, but let me push it back out just a tad. And then I'll, I'll click here and use just like a Q-mesh with a tenth step. Bring it up. stay away from that one but um, anyway yep you can sort of shape up some things like this and then I use this as sort of like a dummy uh, and shape it up like usually what I'll do is I don't try to try not to delete subtools or basically just uh, duplicate and change in place um, but you can also set this to have um, sort of like a, a dynamesh resolution to it so um, that's always cool to use if that's the route you're going 
basically what I would do is I would just take like a large shape like this, duplicate it, uh, and then from that duplicate change it to Dynamesh and then start clipping pieces off of it. Uh, and if I Dynamesh it fairly high, like a maybe 880 or something like that, no blur, turn polish on, and I'll Dynamesh it. That high is going to take a second. It might take a minute to, to dynamish it out. I mean, like five, 550 or 580 maybe or higher. It's kind of decent. It's maybe too, too high. 280 sometimes if I want it to be a little bit lighter. Uh, dynamishing in hard surface? Yeah, sometimes it can get really tight and if, as you can see probably it, in the viewport it's not moving as fast right a lot of times what I'll do is uh, if I'm using like 280 or something like that or um, 280 or lower is gonna be a little bit more manageable five maybe five uh, 580 880 somewhere in around there those tend to hold a lot of like really hard edges and so if I if I do it high, um, I can kind of control that and then Z remesh it, even if it's still Dynamesh, which is kind of cool. And then you can maybe knock it down a little bit more. As you can see here, I have polish turned on, so every time I make a change and re-Dynamesh something, it'll still have like uh, it'll hold some of the hard transitions and then it'll polish it and keep some of the the edges like nice and crisp, uh, almost the same, same as clay polish or something like that, but. You know, you could always use something like this with a, a clip curve or something like that. Um, and crazy Mac key commands are so so different than PC. Uh, use a clip brush. I can cut pieces off. But since it takes a, a little bit of time to to dynamesh, redynamesh it, it might not be the speediest way. There is a way, or if you have a beast of a machine, I suppose. Maybe slice it up, take one part, dynamesh it again lower or something like that. Break it up into smaller pieces. It'd be, be a good way. Yeah, three three DX Max is great for hard surface. I I am myself. I have never taken the time to just buckle down and get three DX Max under my belt, but uh, I totally should. <laughs> like I, I think I I've just become accustomed to using uh, uh, Maya and a few other tools. here and come back to my lasso I just want to hide this guy a little bit I'm gonna hold alt and just hide that for a minute while I'm doing some of these clippings so basically since it just you know again it, it just flattens the clip the clip curve brush it doesn't actually trim it or slice it. Uh, so I can just come in here and just hide one part. I'm going to cut the angle here. And then flatten that, and that should flatten that out. Unhide things, see how it looks. And then next time I re dynamesh, I would just smooth some edges out like this. But yeah, I would probably I, I probably should have chosen a different Dynamesh resolution that would be better, a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll I'll down res it 
for the sake of this because uh, every time it does that and it works with such a, a, a resolution uh, it's not going to be the most speedy in fact in some areas like that where it starts to flatten some of the polys out it's not all that great so let's try something a little lower maybe 280 There we go, that's a little bit more forgiving. Some some spots came out a little funky, but those can be fixed. I don't know why it pulled like a weird pinch. I'm going to crop it and see what happens. Clip it. And it flattened out. So yeah, that's a little bit more manageable. As you can see, probably the mesh is e easier to deal with in the viewport. It's not taking so long to dynamesh all the time. Way and just use that to clip it off. Of course, you can use this with Boolean. So, like, um, if you wanted to exact any shapes out of a Dynamesh, it will actually take a Dynamesh and a non Dynamesh geo. So, like, if you had something that was like triangulated or quadrangulated and you pulled it out of a Dynamesh, Dynamesh is, you know, like it it repoints reorders all of the points every time you remesh it, uh, and therefore it doesn't look like a traditional mesh where you know you have even uh, poly faces and the pulls that it generates, right? So it's pretty high frequency. But like if you uh, do like boolean with Dynamesh, it'll actually leave the Dynamesh faces as is, and probably the algorithm will match that up with the topology of whatever object that you were trying to use to intersect with it and it will actually pull it out. And I would try like re at something higher and then just plucking the shapes out or um, doing a, a zero mesh of course. So I mean even something like this you can take a, a zero mesher and you know just try to hack it out. Uh, go down a little bit. Let's say, for example, if I do like um, zero, no, not zero, 1.5, I'll turn the adaptive size maybe up. You don't have to use this necessarily. Uh, I'm not using any curve strength. And then just try it out. which, depending on its size, might be a little heavy. So, it might take a second, because it's actually crunching from millions of polys down to like, uh, I think it was at 1.5, it should be like, one is like 1,000 range, right? So it's like 1K, so it's like 1.5K uh, is what it's crunching it down to or trying to get it somewhere close to that goal or yeah I, what, what would have been more feasible is maybe do half but sometimes it takes a second depending on the configuration of the, of the machine to really go through and <laughs> I guess like reorder everything come on do it come on come on There we are. That's a little, it's a little rough, but uh, probably if I if I had given it a, a larger number, but if you wanted to crunch it down per se, or like maybe start over, you could probably get your topology back down, uh, and then just reorder it and start over again. 
So crunching it down, it's still, I believe, still, uh, still actually a Dynamesh. Yep. So maybe if I went uh, 220. Redynamish that. It'll probably give me something a little bit lower. But that's that's probably a little bit lighter to deal with. So you can work it around and see how it works out for you. Yeah, that's a little bit lighter. And it's holding most of the shape. It's not it's not too bad actually. I mean some of this just for using it as like a, a concept mesh, it's not so bad. And, and you can use booleans and stuff again to sort of like pull out more shape language and stuff from it. Thank you. Know. So I'll try to post up some uh, previews. I know I've been kind of slacking and posting on ZBC, but hopefully I'll I'll get to it and uh, I'll show you guys a few more parts as I build them out. But uh, just sort of like a quick rundown because I'm probably going to be using some of those workflows and a couple of other couple of other videos and to explain how I did a couple of other works, including some recent stuff that I showed you guys. Uh, there was, I believe, a character that had like an EVA suit, and then there's also another one that was a sort of like a ball mech. And I want to get to some of the detailed parts of that, but I wanted to explain some of the things in my workflow before I went on because there there's a lot of merit to actually doing some stuff like that way where you can create uh, a lot of pieces in another application, whether they be Maya or, um, I mean, Maya, Maya can build a lot, a lot of things, and of course you, you need it, but you know, w how to use them in conjunction with ZBrush. Um, one builds sort of like a major shape, and then another does all of the nice finessing uh, and sculpted details. So I kind of wanted to pull uh, the, um, some time and, and maybe go through how I, I use a, a workflow uh, in between the two apps. So I'm going to use some Fusion stuff uh, and then port it over to ZBrush and then we're going to keep building. Alright, everybody have yourself a good weekend. I hope uh, if you if I didn't get to any questions, and uh, I, I will try to uh, answer them uh, in post. Uh, you can always hit me up on CBC. Uh, I, answer to the tag is Koro, that's K-O-R-O -O on uh, Zebra Central. Um, and of course you can always uh, post comments here and I'll try to go back and look uh, and see if they're hanging around in the chat history or hit me up with a message on Twitch. Awesome. You guys have yourself a good weekend. Thanks for joining me. I very much appreciate it and have fun. Happy Mother's Day as well, by the way. Cheers. Thanks guys.